So uh, I think it's uh, me to take over. That was a really interesting conversation between Genevieve. I, I know from uh, various chat channels and people messaging me and other things that uh, the, 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 the comment was that she really hits the absolutely nail in the head of a few issues in terms of you know, the interaction between uh, the official officialdom, which we'll talk again later, and, uh, you know, the, the experience of students and young people. But it's now time to move on to the, the next session. So uh, this time I get to do the introductions to Louise, and uh, I need to take a moment to embarrass her just to, to, so that everyone knows what an absolutely fantastic job she's done uh, in preparing for all of this. And uh, definitely uh, you would not be having the programme running as smoothly as you've got it now if if she hadn't been doing this. Uh, so uh, I, I am a physicist, uh, but I have an interest in lots of things to do with the social sciences. So the next few sessions, I'm particularly looking forward to being in the audience rather than being, you know, uh, sitting on the panel or, or being the moderator. And uh, obviously I get involved with SafeCast by doing lots of travels. And this event shows just how far SafeCast has traveled across the world. And that's the topic of this one. So. Uh, I'm going to hand over to Louise and uh, Michelle, and since we've been having many debates on pronouncing your name and my wife is Flemish, I'll give it a go. Uh, I'm going to hand over to Michelle van Uthusden and Louise to discuss how Safecast travels, reflecting on the spread of data, devices, ideas and people. So over to you, Louise. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ian. Um, so as he kindly has pointed out, joining me at the table, we have um, Cambridge University researcher, Michel van uh, Oudt He's currently joining us from Belgium. Um, he's wrapped up very warm there, Michel. You've got an excellent scarf going on. Uh, Michel's Thanks. research interest <laughs> is at the intersections of environmental sociology, policymaking and digital participation. Is currently part of a research project called GRACE, which stands for Grassroots Citizen Science, um, Citizen Science for Global Data Environments Project. He's fascinated by and promotes interactions between grassroots citizen science groups and formal institutions. And he's been involved in developing mutually responsive environmental governance approaches, particularly in relation to nuclear policy making. So welcome, Michiel. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Our conversation today. You're welcome. Uh, our conversation today is going to focus around Safecast as a thing or a collection of things that move around the world. Um, both Michelle and I are both uh, are social scientists, and we're uh, as a result we're obsessed with things, particularly things and devices like the Safecast Big Igey, which you can see on my rucksack there in Nepal just before lockdown. I, I snuck it in. Um, and things like measuring uh, methods and practices. So we try to have a, a look at and understand what these things do to see where they go and how they travel. But we think that Safecast is probably a lot more than that. We're drawn to um, particularly to small, often mundane things which might easily be overlooked for discussion when we're talking about radiation monitoring. So Michelle, I wanted to start off our conversation by asking you about Safecast stickers. Um, something which many of you watching uh, may have seen perhaps stuck on a window or on a laptop or on the back of a big guy if you have one um, around. So I wonder, surely something as mundane as a sticker can't really be doing that much. Where have you seen them and uh, what did they make you do and what do you think that they're doing as a result? Well, I do think they do things, right? I think you think the same. This is why we're having this conversation. I mean, we've heard so much now um, in the past sessions um, about the hard data, the technical data, and, and you know, there's questions of validity and accuracy and so on. Um, mm -hmm. But as you said, Safecast is much more than that. So I think we should also be considering other data, um, for, for instance, stickers, you know, for, for, for social scientists and for ethnographers, those are equally data because they perform something, they do something. Um, but so just to give you some context, it was, um, I think it was in 2018 when I had traveled to Japan it was one of my trips where I, I met up with, with Asby Brown and he gave me some of these state Safecast stickers. So the ones with the logo, right? They're all over, um, they're, all, they're on the, the screen. You've seen them today. Um, and I took them back with me. And um, it's, it's interesting because um, on, on the way back, I was having a, a conversation with, um, uh, yeah, so you see it there on, on Louise's screen. Uh, but so on, on the way back, I was having a conversation with colleagues, you know, like um, colleagues from uh, the Nuclear Research Center, where I was based at the time, 
um, about how do we display these stickers or do we even display them? Um, because they can be contentious, at least in, in the, the working environment where we were um, where we were at the time or where I was at the time. And so actually what the sticker already triggered was some kind of conversation about um, you know, what, what the citizen science represent, what the safecast represent, um, and about how it travels. It travels uh, on a laptop, on a cell phone, and, and, and so in often very mundane ways. Um, and at the center where I was, you know, people have mixed feelings. There's, there's those who are very um, uh, responsive to citizen science, are very eager to engage with it. And there's other people who are much more, you know, reluctant uh, or even opposed to it. So, um, I mean, and that has to do with, with, for instance, the idea that citizens cannot measure data uh, reliably, you know, those discussions. I think we've heard some of that uh, earlier today. Um, but so in the end, the stickers went everywhere. I have one on my um, table tray in, in the living room, but that then sparked a conversation with my kids about what SafeCast is and, and you know, and so on. So they, they may seem trivial, but I think they actually do things. Uh, at the very least, they spark conversation. Um, and perhaps this is something you want to touch on, Louise, because you told, you told me that you had a similar experience with, with the, the V-Guides. Yeah, so uh, as with many people, I think, uh, who are either watching or listening and I've made videos, I've, I've made my own big IG uh, and I've, I've taken it to various places. Um, but sometimes I was a bit sort of uh, reticent, I think, to show it. Other places I was really proud of it and kind of wanted to show people that I was doing it and get them involved in why are you taking a radiation monitor to Seoul in Korea and um, showing my hosts where I was staying the big idea in other places, particularly actually um, uh, formal institutions and, and government agencies, if I went to speak to them, I probably actually was slightly more circumspect because I know that there's this kind of tension between who's allowed to measure data, who's allowed to come up with acceptable devices and standards and ways of doing things, and who then is accepting of the things that it discusses. So, by, by making that uh, a link between me and SafeCast um, during those discussions, I thought that sometimes it would uh, influence what our discussions would be about and how open people might be with me around their feelings about it. Yeah, so it has a lot to do with power as well. Yeah. Which is what counts as, you know, as, as valid knowledge and what counts as data. Big questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I wonder if I can ask you a second question, which is um, around, uh, so I suppose radiation monitors and stickers as physical things are kind of relatively easy to th think about as things that move around. And we've certainly seen, um, seen that happening already, um, even during uh, throughout this session. Um, but I wonder whether there are other safe cast things that might travel around that are slightly less tangible, perhaps non-physical things. Can you... Uh, I just wondered if you had any ideas about that in particular. Well, I think certainly the ideas, right? There's certain concepts, even the notion of citizen science, right? That that means so many things. So again, that could spark uh, lots of debate. Uh, you know, it could be implicit or explicit where people are addressing the question of what is citizen science that seems to pop up a, a lot in certain yeah. um, arenas, but also, you know, conversations that, um, uh, conferences. So, for instance, ASBI has been to many of the European uh, conferences. Um, so he's very much a Safecast traveler, you could say. Um, so he brings Safecast with him. Oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> this is Rico in 2017, and actually, there's quite a few people who are on this uh, this discussion today, uh, uh, sort of somewhere in that photograph. Well, good luck figuring that out. <laughs> um, but so I think then um, another thing that well, or through these conversations, for instance, presentations being given at conferences, um, what becomes explicit are, are, are tensions. Um, and, and so tensions aren't always tangible, but it could be tensions between citizens and formal institutions. It could be tensions between ways of measuring and modes of reasoning. So that comes back to the question of what counts as evidence, what counts as real data, and, and what's discarded. Uh, and what are the data for, right? What, you know, so often these discussions may remain implicit, but I think that's one of like the added value or um, what SafeCast has really contributed to is making these questions more explicit and putting them on the table. Um, and then I think for us, you know, social scientists, it would be really interesting to see, are these tensions productive? Because there's always gonna be tensions. 
uh, but are, can they be made to be productive or are they going to be destructive, right? So for instance, when, when groups don't, don't even converse or don't even engage with each other in any um, um, constructive way, you could say. Okay, great. And finally, um, I think we've kind of touched on SafeCast being a number of different things. So it's, it's people, it's devices, it's methods and ways of doing citizen science, it's ideas of um, what counts as acceptable ways of uh, challenging um, or validating other sources of information. And it has become an object of study for quite a number of social science researchers, um, myself included, but also of themselves. So I know that SafeCast have also published their own um, research. So um, why do you think SafeCast potentially has become um, an object of social science research? So particularly, perhaps more so than other citizen science radiation monitoring groups, because there are many of those um, in Japan as well. Um, and I wonder why SafeCast often sort of it becomes the poster child slightly for uh, radiation monitoring. It would be great to get your response to this because, um, you know, this I don't think anyone's really asking that question. So it's, it's actually quite, uh, quite innovative. I mean, I could say that um, I think it's being studied because it's come to matter, right? So it's come to matter um, socially, culturally, scientifically, technically, and, and politically. And that's when I think many social scientists start paying attention. So it's it's a real thing, but it you know to, to use that terminology, it, it, it travels, it it's noticed, um, observed, praised, and criticized. And at the same time, it's not really clear what it is, right? It's just it's not one single entity. Um, but so in in you know I could use this this metaphor is coming back to the stickers. So it's like it's a very mundane object representing safeguards, but I see it in my living room every day. It's a sticker on a on a table tray, and so it's part of the furniture. I've become accustomed to it. It's 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 there, and perhaps in the long run, but this is a big question. You know, um, safecast could become part of the furniture of environmental monitoring and governance. I think that's a, a big question for the next ten years. Well, yeah. what are your thoughts about social scientists paying attention? Uh, I'm going to make this one very quick because we're almost unfortunately out of time, although I think we've we've also observed that you and I could probably talk about this for hours and hours. Um, but my my feeling is probably I think SafeCast is quite international. There's a lot of English speakers, and I think that SafeCast has probably traveled more internationally, I would say almost than sometimes when I mentioned SafeCast to other people in Japan, it was less well known in Japan that I would, than I had imagined. And I think it's probably more well known outside of Japan, although I'm sure other people would disagree with me on that. But I think it makes it accessible in terms of um, uh, just the, the practicalities of getting things published in English is probably um, it means that you have a wider audience. And therefore, um, people find it that they're very easy to get engaged in. That's how I, I got involved with SafeCast was just dropping Sean an email, and then uh, they sort of welcome me with open arms and are always hosting various um, researchers. So I think they're a very open organization, very keen to sort of let people kind of get underneath what it is that they're doing and how they're doing it, which means they're very accessible for researchers. So yeah, at this point, point, I can see Sorry. that Ian is. Um, come back on so he's giving me the eye off screen so um i wanted to say thank you ever so much michael that's been a, a great conversation I'm, I'm only sorry we couldn't go on for longer um but we've got a packed schedule so we've got to move on to um some other guests so um uh, before we go um ian was there anything that you wanted to flag up for michael before we go no, I, 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 it's, we've probably been too fast for people to sneak in in questions, but it's a really interesting discussion. I've got lots of stickers. I, I, I think I may be modifying one of my tea trees as, uh, to, to, to remind myself of SafeCast more often now. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, but thank you Michelle, and um, please Bye -bye. Uh, keep watching and uh, get involved in the discussion online if you can. Hi, my name is Akmal Safarov and I am from Uzbekistan. I work as a teaching assistant at the Department of Nuclear Physics and Astronomy of Samarkand State University. At the same time, I work as a researcher at Nuclear Physics Laboratory of the same university. Back in 2017, I attended a joint ICTP IEA workshop on environmental mapping, where I learned about safecast 
and its product called BeGuideMe. They are mentors taught me how to assemble my own device. Moreover, they taught me how to analyze and map data. Right now we are standing inside of the Nuclear Electronics Lab, which I am creating together with my team within the IEA's Technical Cooperation Project. I very much like uh, eGuide sensors because they allow me to re record data such as uh, coordinates, time, dose rates, with subsequent possibility of creating beautiful dose rate maps. Within my current IEA TC project, we are expecting to obtain two more safeguard devices. I am planning to use uh, big ID sensors to create new lab exercises for my students. The most, the most uh, interesting research where I used uh, big ID sensors was when we did monitoring of construction site of the first Central Asian nuclear power plant. Now we are standing in the room where we analyze and discuss data that was collected using big ID sensors. Behind me is a map of Uzbekistan with my measurements on it. I'm very happy that back in 2017 I was able to meet such wonderful people and I'm also happy that I was able to bring new knowledge and equipment to my laboratory and to my university. Today, big ID sensors are extensively used in my university and obtained data is very useful part of master level and bachelor level students thesis work as well as articles. Thank you very much and happy 10th anniversary to SafeCast. Goodbye.